Guess what? On today's agenda, we are talking about the Fishman Island arc. Can you believe we are 25 arcs in? I think it's 25. That is crazy <gasps> and a little scary. What's also crazy is that I had so many mixed feelings about this arc. The first half of this arc, I was like, this may be my least favorite arc of the One Piece. And then we got to the second half and I had some moments that I just really love. So I'm all over the place with this, but there was a lot in these 51 chapters to dig into. And some of the stuff we're not gonna dig into in this video. There's some big core characters and concepts that I wanna discuss. But if we wanna get into the little smaller things that I may not touch on, we can do that during the One Piece after party live stream. That is something that I've started recently so we can dig deeper into these arcs and into this amazing story. And it's fun and it's great. And it's uh, at one o'clock PM every Sunday, Central Standard Time. So if you wanna do that, feel free to join us. If not, we can sit here right now and talk about some things that happened in this arc that just have my mind all over the place. Okay, so I wanna start by talking about how this arc made me feel. And it made me feel like I don't know how to feel because there, the overall theme of this arc and the concepts were very, very strong. Well, they wanted to be strong, but there were so many things hindering me from being fully invested in this arc. The first thing being that I, okay, was very affected by the Marine Ford arc and I wanted more time with just our crew after this two year time skip and we didn't get that. Now, I will say, that I've, since I've completed the full arc, I'm kind of okay, kind of, with how things went down because we did get to learn throughout the arc and especially towards the end, how much they've grown and their different powers and just all, all the great things. But I don't know, I wanted more one-on-one -on -one time with them and we didn't really get that. We did, but we didn't. And maybe that's okay, I've been pondering that. We got to see them in their elements and being their fun, goofy selves, arguing amongst one another, loving one another, and just having a good time at times and then going to battle when necessary. But that was a huge thing that kind of took me out, uh, which goes with this second thing. We got so much information on this whole island and all of these people and all these beliefs and ideas and systems, which would have been okay. I just don't think this was the time because I don't know how I was supposed to be so invested in all these other people and their problems and their issues when I'm still thinking about the problems and issues that our own crew have gone through um, and that we haven't really got to dig into as much. So it's it's hard for me to say that because I I truly did like this where this arc went with the racism and discrimination. And I liked it because we went to a place that we don't always go to when racism or discrimination is concerned. And that is when it's about vengeance and when it's about, I'm not turning the other cheek. This is not okay how you've been treating us. And not only am I going to show you that it's not okay, but I'm gonna do worse than you could have ever done. I thought that was a very powerful way to go about things because you know, even things that I've dealt with, there are times where you're just like, you know what, I don't wanna be the bigger person. And I don't want to sit here and accept this kind of treatment. I don't wanna say that, you know, they'll reap what they sow. No, I'm gonna be the one that reaps what they sow. You have that, you have that in you sometimes, especially when racism is a factor, but you also see that that's not the way to go because it can lead to your demise when you try to fight fire with fire. And so the way that was done was excellent in this story. There just were, I just wish it was done later. That's the, that's the biggest thing that I can say. I wish that we tackled this arc later. And on top of that, the people that were featured, our main villains, uh, or villain, I guess, but there were villains, who knows? I think that, I wish it was focused on other people. Oh my gosh, <laughs> choking. I wish that it was focused on other people than what we got in here. But I got a lot out of this arc, so. I'm sitting all over the place with it, but I'm okay with it. I think I'm getting there. It's time to talk about Hody. Hody was the most 
bizarre villain that I think that we have had. And by bizarre, I don't mean that he was just that unique. He was that not unique that made this so bizarre for me. I don't get him. First of all, how do we have somebody like Arlong who changed the game for the One Piece story as a whole, who made Nami's story arc just jump to all kinds of levels, who was such a terrible but profound villain. How do we go from Arlong to Hody, Howdy, whatever the heck his name is? I don't know. And for us to come to Fishman Island, which is kind of, um, you know, something that we were building up to for a while, plus knowing the connection with Arlong, I was so deeply, deeply disappointed. Now, kind of going back to what I said about this arc as a whole, there were things about Hody that made him a good villain. I'm not a good villain, but an okay villain. I do like that he was just this apathetic character and he was the most backwards leader because he wasn't a leader by true leading. He, his, his whole mindset was based on that of others. And so I don't know how he ever planned on truly taking over the way that he did when he never built anything off of himself or practicing his own ideals. He, from a child, was ingrained with a, a thought process that he just ran with. And you kind of see that his whole life has been on dependent on something else, somebody else's beliefs, pills to make him stronger. But at the same time, he was scary because he didn't really have anything to lose because even though he was leaning on somebody else's mentality, because that mentality was do whatever it takes to get back at the humans, whether that means kill them, kill my own people, kill Otahimi, Ota, you know, I'm talking about the queen, princess queen. It, it's like he's, he's, you can't stop him. You can't get into his head. You can't, he's just this force that is to be reckoned with, but that can be wrecked very easily. So he was very layered and I didn't like him because there just wasn't much depth to him. Arlong, I felt like we had a lot of depth and Hody was just kind of like Hody, but there are more layers to him than I realized. And he's just a very angry person with no true desires, just anger. And the more that I talk about this, the more that I see how this art can be powerful, but there just needed to be more oomph. I don't know if I would have made Hody the villain, at least not right now. I totally would have, totally. I would have definitely made it focused on Arlong if possible. And I don't think Arlong's even dead, so I don't know why. I don't know, I have so many questions. Um, or Fisher Tiger, which we'll get into, but I don't know, Hody just, he just wasn't it. He could have been, it just wasn't it. It wasn't it, but there was a lot to take from his character. To make matters worse, we have Vanderdecken. What was wrong with him? He was all over the place. Now, I did kind of like the history tied to him. He was like a descendant of the original Vanderdecken. These names, I probably will mess him up. But yeah, I kind of like that aspect of him, but he was so goofy. And the thing is, to me, he had way more of a personality than Hody. So I, for the longest thought, he was going to be our main villain. He had more meat to him than Hody and really more of a storyline, but he was so sporadic that you see why Hody was the leader because Vanderdecken is sitting there one minute wanting the mermaid's powers and trying to marry her, but then killing her because his emotions can't handle her not wanting to be with him, which I wonder why. Then he is so just all like he can't, I don't even know how to describe him. He's so reckless with his inability to process 
how to get what he wants that he ends up getting the Noah and trying to throw that at the mermaid and then almost destroying the island. Like he just, he just was all wrong. But I will say this, he had such a cool devil fruit power. The idea of him being able to touch somebody and then whatever he throws at them or whatever, it can chase them until either it's stopped or it hits them. I really like that concept. And honestly, I wish he would have just been not so dingy um, because I think he could have been a stronger villain than Hody. Maybe, I don't know. He was a hot mess, but yeah, Vanderdecken, I don't know, could have, could have. I, I guess one thing that was cool about him and Hody was them kind of going at it in the end. And I think that goes back to that idea of once again, trying to fight evil with evil and getting more evil until there's just nothing left. And you saw that with them. So yeah, I, I think that he had his purpose, but also just why him out of, <laughs> out of everybody we're going to deal with. Yeah. Um, those are my thoughts on Vanderdecken. Shira Hoshi, uh, may have butchered that name, but now we're kind of getting into a character that I semi liked, but didn't like. The thing about this character is she was supposed to be such a big deal that she wasn't a big deal. Everything about her was like, she has this big background of a, you know, the tragic story with her mom. She has these insane abilities. She's the under the king. She's a king's daughter. She's locked away because Vanderdecken can't stop trying to kill her because something's wrong with him. You have all these things to her, but she lacked so much personality that it was hard for me to be like, yes, this is her. It wasn't like Vivi, who I know I always bring up because I loved her. Vivi had so much to her, to me. And this one, she's kind of like, eh, you know, other than her crying all the time. But it's crazy because there's this part of her that's also extremely strong at the best and worst times. For example, whenever she was standing up to Vanderdecken and would tell that man that he was not her type. I love that she did that. I love that she stood her ground in that way. No matter what this very, very unstable man would do to her, he she, she was willing to stand her ground. She was willing to make sure that Noah followed her so she could protect Fishman Island. She was very brave. The part with her mother, the part with her mother and knowing who killed her, which that whole reveal for Hody, you know, he's not my favorite, but that whole reveal of finding out he's the one who did it was pretty, pretty well done in this arc. Um, but her knowing that and keeping that secret in to fulfill her mother's wish of keeping the peace. And I mean, she, it, it almost doesn't fit her character, but it does because you know she has a good heart. Um, but her just day to day, or whatever we got to see her just normal existence uh, wasn't like just ooh for me, but I will say her and Luffy were a great duo. The wimpy, him calling her wimpy was so Luffy and hilarious and fitting. And I, I loved how that also tied into Luffy and Ace and Ace calling Luffy a weakling and wimpy and him doing the same thing to her and seeing how much Luffy has grown. And in a sense, I feel doing that to her to make her stronger. And even later when he calls her, he called her wimpy something. And then now it's just wimpy kind of her name. And she's so happy about that. And I, I really, I mean, it's, it's hard not to like that part of them. But again, that's still more of Luffy, but you needed her emotional personality to make it work. So I didn't love her character, but I liked her, especially towards the end. Um, she had her moments. She had her moments. Fisher Tiger. Now, out of all these new characters that we had to meet and deal with, this one was my favorite. His storyline is so the epitome to me of what this arc represents. I loved everything about his story. And I just can't fathom how we, I, I'm almost angry that we got teased with such a strong character to only have to 
go throughout most of this arc with the likes of Hody and Vanderdecken. But at least we got to experience somewhat a Fisher Tiger story. He really displayed such a great inner strength of wanting to seek vengeance, but also understanding the detriment of an eye for an eye and the internal battle that he had until his very last breath, until being the undoing of his life by having that still internal struggle of, I know what we have to do to get better, but I still refuse to back down and ever completely submerge myself with the humans, including not getting their blood when it can save me was Oh, it just, it gives you so much to think about. With Fisher Tiger, it was really nice to see the formation of the Sun Pirates and getting to see Jimbe and Arlong and Hatchie and, and kind of their little group at the time. And the difference between Fisher Tiger and Arlong, two people with similar frustrations but the way that they have let it consume them is very different. And I feel like, I feel like Fisher Tiger leads more with purpose and Arlong leads more with anger. And um, in the end, you know that both of them though, because they're so similar, they were still both their own downfall. And we even have a moment where Fisher Tiger, after he stops Arlong from literally trying to kill somebody from the military, he tells Jinbe that, look, I still, I, I'm telling Arlong not to do whatever, but I still have that in me. Um, but he fought that, he fought it. And it was really nice seeing the different dynamics between the two. He understands a bigger picture while Arlong wants immediate satisfaction. And we get to see Fisher Tiger's softer side with Koala, uh, sorry about that, the little girl and him allowing her to not only come on her their ship, but to help her go home. And it's it, I this part is just, it really gets to me because we see that he does have an open mind, but he's so aware of the truth and how long it's gonna to take to get to where they need to go. And when he gets on that island to walk her, which is just the sweetest moment, I know something bad is going to happen. And it's really, despite all the conversations about racism and discrimination throughout this arc, I really truly felt it when he was walking with her, their stares, the way they looked at him, I could feel it. I don't even know if that was the, the intent of that moment. I don't know if it was because they were betraying him. So maybe they were looking at him because they knew it was happening. But even the betrayal, to see that happening when he was trying, he was trying in his own way, despite him hating the humans, he was still trying and it still backfired. And it's, it's hard to see why he just wouldn't take the human blood, but you also see why when stuff like that happens. And then on top of that, we learned that he really was one of his missions. It wasn't what he said it was. He was actually made a slave and he got to see the true evil of humans. And that just made his, his mindset up, which in the ending of him was so tragic because you have this moment where he's like, I refuse to take their blood, but I also know that there's hope through people like Koala. So it's like that battle just never ended. He knew what he felt and what he believed, but he also knew that change could happen and ending it that way was, ugh. I mean, I loved his storyline clearly. And um, I wish we got more of him. I really do. I have already brought up Arlong a couple of times, but I do want to say that I really wish that we could have um, dug into his childhood and have the flashback from his perspective. I think that it's, 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 an, it's an interesting choice to have such a prominent character not have a prominent position in his world, you know? Um, I don't know if maybe we'll get more about him later, but I feel like this would have been a really good time not to even humanize him because one thing we learned in this arc is that there's just gonna, there's some people, some fishmen, some people who will be stuck in their ways and they do just want to 
um, lead with evil and anger. So, but I think that it would have been really nice to just flesh him out more. We got a little bit of, you know, obviously how upset and hurt he was about Fisher Tiger dying and how he, that really kind of set him off to, to go do his, his thing after he was captured and did his, started his Arlong Pirates and all of that. Um, yeah, also this is kind of off topic, but I don't really get the issue and why Jinbei was so scared to tell Nami that he's the one who let Arlong out and, Sanji getting mad. Obviously, I know that Sanji's upset because of what happened with Nami and how much that affected Nami. But Jinbei didn't know the Straw Hat crew at the time. Um, Jinbei, that was his family, even though, I mean, twisted family. But that was his family at the time. And he didn't owe the military. Like He wasn't the humans still were like discriminate. can't even talk. The humans were still racist. And didn't treat his people right so I don't know why people would think that he wouldn't have freed Arlong and he never would have thought that Arlong would have gone that I mean maybe he would have maybe he felt guilty because deep down he knew how destructive Arlong could be but I don't know I didn't really get that part but bottom line um yeah I just I think it was a missed opportunity especially because I don't think Arlong is dead so I wish Arlong would have made like a reprise I don't know I don't know what do you guys think was it fine? Should Arlong have? I don't know. I don't know. It's a it's a choice. And um, I'm trying to see how I feel about it. Because instead of getting more about Arlong, we got more of Otahimi. Otahimi. Let's talk about her. Otahimi is a very difficult character for me to talk about because I feel really bad that I didn't like her the way that I should. I, of course, love that she is this positive influence and wanting nothing but humans and fishmen to unite. But again, there's not enough background about her for me to be so invested in her mission. And to me, she did a lot of stuff that was very impulsive at times. And it just wouldn't, it wasn't going to work the way that, to me, the way that she was wanting it, there wasn't a lot of structure to her plan. And maybe you can't in those moments, but I just, I didn't feel for her the way that I did for uh, Fisher Tiger. And obviously it's tragic that she passed away. And to me, what really got me was when her sons, and to me, that was one of the most emotional parts of this story, were trying not to, were trying to stay so strong despite tears falling down their face when she was passing away because they knew that she wanted them to stay strong for their sister. And but yeah, I, I, I liked her. I liked that she, I liked what she represented her perspective of, of being somebody out there trying to make changes, but doing it in that way that honestly, I would probably do things more her way, but I just, I, I didn't know enough about her to feel that strongly about what she was doing. And she just seemed kind of, you know, and then there's a kind of the funny part about her crying, kind of like her daughter. And I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think I'll have to reread this and take more time to, to take in what she did present in the story, but I really wish I would have liked her more than I did, but I didn't dislike her and I'll always respect her mission. I just didn't connect with it. Let's take a moment to talk about our crew, our amazing crew. I loved them at the end. I love the tie-in of seeing all of them battle 10 times stronger than they were prior to this. The new moves, the confidence. Usopp had a great moment whenever he said, I'm losing my touch because I'm not running away because I know that I can do this now. Excellent, excellent line from Usopp. Chopper, whenever he, Zoro told him something about like, you know, your human form is looking less human or, or looking just stronger. And he says, well, I don't, I, I realized that, you know, before I was trying to make friends and that's why I wish I looked more human, but now, you know, life is good and I, I, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And Zoro's just like, okay, it was such a sweet moment. We have Zoro when he literally, I wanted to see more from Zoro in general because I think he's just so ridiculously strong now and we just haven't got to really dig into that. Uh, he lets us know though. I mean, any chance he gets, he's trying to cut something like when they were headed to, <laughs> headed to Fishman Island. Um, but I think he fought Hody 
under the water in Cut-In. I think that was the, the battle uh, fight. So incredibly good. Obviously, Nami, I like seeing all her new things with her little baton wand thing. Um, Robin, uh, I'll talk more about her later, but obviously she's always the one who gets us like really deep um pieces of information that are so pertinent to the story and Luffy. Luffy was just a gem in this arc. Luffy was hilarious. He fought so incredibly hard. He, 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 oh, there's so much he did that was great, but that using his hockey powers to knock out 50,000 of the Fishman soldiers or whatever they were, the enemies was incredible, incredible. I'm very proud of our crew. I loved so much about what they did. Initially, when we were getting to Fishman Island, I wasn't. I wanted a little bit more. It was kind of a long, information-heavy section. Which, by the way, part of this arc, I want to make it very clear that part of it could be that I've learned reading this. I am not somebody who is just that crazy about world building, unfortunately. Um, I think that's why I have an issue with a lot of fantasy books. What does that say about me? I don't know. Maybe I just like them a little bit more simple, but um, I, I don't need so, so many details. Why so I have an issue with classical books. I, I just don't need that much. And like, this was very information heavy. So I think that's also something that could have led to why I wasn't crazy about it. So I don't want to take away from that for people who do enjoy that because that could just be something that I'm just not enjoying and we got a lot of that especially in the beginning and so um yeah I think that uh I'm just very proud of our crew and I can't wait to see what they're gonna do in these next few arcs because they're so ridiculously amazing now they were always amazing but like They've like leveled it up, which I didn't think was possible. Let's talk about a few random things that happened. Uh, we're just gonna address the Sanji nosebleeds. When I realized this is going to be an ongoing thing, it didn't bother me as much as I thought I would, but I'm just, I get it. He really likes women. He really missed whatever he missed. And I just, it was just, it's a lot. But I get it. I get it. I'm just not like over the top about it. I don't think it's that hilarious. Um, but, you know, Sanji, he got his dream of meeting the mermaids, I guess, and then was healed. And that was great. I don't know. It was a, it was a thing that I could have lived without, but I'm not mad about it. I'm just like, we get it. There was also a really good part when the crew was trying to get to Fishman Island underwater, which by the way, made me so claustrophobic. It was really cool, but whew, I could never, I could never go that far. But I think they were stopped by Hody's people or some, some people saying like, look, you either come with us or we destroy you. And Luffy says, I will not come with you. And Nami in the meantime, is like knowing he's gonna say no to them. And it's like, we are running out of air or something. We gotta get out of here. So they use Frankie's little scoopta, whatever to get out. But I loved how Luffy was ready. But also it was so nice to see that Nami is so, uh, she can perceive everything Luffy is about to do. And it was a really cute moment. It was really great to see Cami and Papaga, pa him. And he's living his best life. He's <laughs> his nice little house, his his stardom. That was really nice to see. And then of course, Cammy's very helpful and, and we get to see Hatchie and poor Hatchie is so beat up, um, but they're loyal, they're loyal friends. The King and our mermaid's brothers were cool. Like I said, they had one of the most emotional parts for me. I really think that Oda made one of those brothers and Hody look way too much alike. Just the brother looked like a much more like fluffy version. I really liked the brother and Luffy kind of working together at the end. That was nice. All of the people in Hody's group, the main core people in his army, uh, yeah, lackluster for me. Didn't care for any of them. And one of them, this one, drove me absolutely nuts. I could not, it just, I was so, oh, those fights were, I liked what we got to see with our Straw Hat crew, but them individually, just not really my thing. Caribou, Caribou, again, too many people. Like, 
I suppose his part could have been kind of interesting. He made things a little funny, but he was just such a little busybody that I didn't have time to entertain. We had wars going on and I, in, in, a, in a world that I don't even know anything about, but I'm having to learn, learn all this information. Then we have him, you know, slimy and putting treasure in him and framing the straw hat people and making people think they took the mermaids and trying to kill them. And I just, he was doing too much when we already had so much going on. But I am interested to see what it's gonna be like dealing with him. If he's gonna be like super evil or more like a buggy character. I'm ready to see how that turns out. Shout out to the crystal ball lady. I liked her a lot. I liked her uh, part in this art, kind of made things a little bit different in her being able to kind of foresee the future. I liked her demeanor. I think we got to see a part of her in the past when she was a kid. That was really cool. Charlotte, Char I'm sorry, my, my brain is starting to <laughs> starting to get all mushy, but really liked her part. And like I said earlier, Robin's character allows us to get so much pertinent information that you can just tell is going to be a big deal later on with the Joy Boy situation and the fact that our mermaid is technically going to be named Poseidon, which is what, the god of the sea. It's been a while since I've been into Greek mythology, but I do have a book on Greek mythology I need to read soon. So yeah, um, like oh, information overload, but that was actually really cool to find out. And then we're just given a ton of stuff. I love the end with the feast uh, and Luffy just eating everything. <laughs> and then we have uh, Caribou trying to get the mermaid and Luffy and I think Zoro, maybe Sanji stop him, which is great. A uh, really nice moment. We get big mom who is an emperor, one of the four emperors. And apparently big mom likes candy. And Luffy is hilarious in this because during that feast, he got all that delicious candy and her people are like, we need the candy. And because of all the, the chaos, the candy thing is messed up right now. And so they gave Luffy and them the last bit and Luffy's like, well, we ate it and it was delicious. And Big Mom is very upset. And Luffy's like, well, just get over it. Here's some treasure. Use this <laughs> to get what you need and leave Fishman Island alone. And then we have this epic, epic moment between Luffy and Big Mom where Big Mom's like, you know what? Uh, I guess she's gonna set aside the candy for now. She's like, but I'm gonna see you in the new world. And he's like, I'll see you too. And I'm going to be the one to reside over Fishman Island. Like, was it Whitebeard? <sighs> I love it, I love it. Really, really nice. And so much context or context that will be needed to break down all of this new information that we got. Moments that I loved. We are going to end this with moments that I just loved in this arc. The first one being Rayleigh and his flashback with Roger. Did you all think that I would not address that when you know I am a sentimental being? In that moment, I was just like, Oda, just take my tears, take them, uh, patent them, you, they're yours. Because that, how, see, that's the crazy thing about Oda's work. It's like he can have like this big story, but like those two panels or three, four, five, six panels will stick out to me and affect me in a way that you wouldn't think it's possible in like two pages. It's insane. But I absolutely love that part. First of all, there was so much in there, seeing them meet for the first time and Rayleigh kind of being like, who are you? Like, we're not gonna be a team. And, and Roger being like, yes, yes we are. And the fact that he looks like Luffy or maybe he looks like Ace, but he looked like Luffy to me. And the straw hat, is that why Luffy wears a straw hat? I have so many questions now. Is that why Shanks gave him the hat because they all wore it? I don't know, but I loved it. I loved it so much. And then he was so much like Luffy, even though Rayleigh was saying, we're not gonna be a team. He's like, we're gonna do great things, Rayleigh. And Rayleigh cries happy tears, but like sad from the memory. And then he says something that really bothers me. He says that, you know, Maybe he really likes Luffy, of course, and he's he's like, maybe this, maybe I will stay alive a little bit longer. Where are you going? Where were you thinking you were going, really? What, what do you mean a little bit? No, you're, Oda, I pr don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I love Rayleigh. Don't do it. Luffy taking Shirahoshi outside. 
I love that. I love how, despite everything that could happen, he was just like, you want to go outside? Do you want to go outside? Let's do it. And took her to her mom's grave. And I, yeah, I love that. I love Luffy, obviously. Luffy, when, who said it? I can't even remember at this point. Hody, somebody said they were going to be Pirate King. And Luffy said, huh? I'm going to be Pirate King and Unleashed. Luffy, any moment like that, I, I mean, I'm, I'm down for it. And that was so good. So good. People may not think this is a, a big moment, but I could not stop laughing when Jinbei finished telling the story about Fisher Tiger and Odahimi. And you see Luffy sleeping. I, do you know how I laughed so hard? Because me, like that is something like... I would do, but not do, you know what I mean? Because etiquette and all that. Luffy, <laughs> I love him. Oh my gosh, probably one of my favorite parts of this whole thing. You guys, I laughed for a very long time. Oh, I really enjoyed how Luffy and Zoro both made it very clear that they're not heroes, which was like slap me over with the feather and I had to have a wake up call with that because I literally think of them as heroes. And you know what they said? They said, we're not heroes. And a part of me is like, really? But it's nice because they are pirates and they are, it makes them more pirate-like because we do see them doing all these epic things, but they're like, don't get it twisted. They're, we are pirates for a reason and we're selfish and we're putting our needs first and what we want first. And I thought that was a really nice moment that I just didn't expect, but I think it does kind of put me in my place. Like, look, girl, remember, remember who we are. I do remember you all, although I still think you're heroes, but what do I know? I really like the plan that Luffy and Jinbei came up with to kind of trick Hody and everybody. And then they had this really epic plan and coming out of the well, I think some animal and that was great very creative and then just epic when everybody popped up and we're ready for battle okay this part i should not say i love it because it made me furious but the idea of it was insane to me Aikunu, i whatever his name is you know i don't like him and aokiji fighting and what did they say for like 10 days fighting and how did aokiji lose how He's great. I wanted him to destroy that <gasps> horrible person. And I know a lot of you say he was doing his job with AC, yada, yada, yada. No, he did the most traumatic thing. And I won't forgive him. I won't forgive Oda. I just won't forgive in that scenario. So the idea of them battling was so cool, but like, no, how did he win? Why did he win? <sighs> but yeah. Very, very interesting detail that was just thrown in there. And finally, finally, the Luffy and Jinbei tran blood transfusion. Um, and you know, I didn't even think about that because of the like racial aspect of it, of the fishman and the human, you know, and the blood part. Um, I see that now, but I really just thought about it because to me, that was just love. Jinbei showing that he loved Luffy and I think that is even more prominent than than thinking about it as a racing like it's really like when you just truly love people you're not even thinking about it that way it's like I care about you race none of it has to do with it it's about who you are which is still kind of the same concept but I think that's what they need is love and care and friendship and that to me is what kills racism um truly liking people for who they are and um and, and even when it comes to like classism and all of that stuff it's it's about looking at people for what they are and Jim Bay loves Luffy and so he wanted to save him and I thought that was a beautiful moment and then Luffy asked him to join the crew and I thought it was interesting how this happened how he said that he wanted to but he just couldn't right now because that's a you know finishing out of Fishman Island I thought that was a nice kind of different change and dynamic of people you know joining our crew but I'm ready for you Jinbei come join the Straw Hat crew it's gonna be great it's gonna be great all right that concludes my arc discussion review of Fishman Island I have such a complex uh, relationship with this arc. But you know, the more I talk about it, the more I realize how many conversations it creates. And I think that makes it 
a better arc than I realized. Again, definitely flaws in it, definitely not my favorite, but I like how it made me think. And it also made me so excited about what's to come. And yeah, I am ready to continue this journey. So we're gonna do just that. This video has come to an end, but of course I will see you all in the next video. Until we meet again, go read.